Hello and welcome to Chairside Live. I'm your host, Megan Strong. Today's show is all about bone grafting. When insufficient bone threatens to shut down your implant treatment plan, socket regeneration and other grafting procedures might just save the day. In this episode, Dr. Timothy Kaczynski is using bone grafting material to aid in successful dental implant therapy. So let's throw it over to Dr. Kaczynski and jump right in. Hi, this is Dr. Tim Kaczynski from Bingham Farms, Michigan. And today we're going to talk about bone grafting, the essential indications and techniques in implant dentistry. Case number one, let's look at case number one, which is socket regeneration. We see that our patient presented with a non-restorable mandibular first molar. The tooth had received prior endodontic treatment and displayed infection and severe recurrent decay. We see that we suction the tooth mesial distally um, using a long 557 surgical burr and the existing crown was removed. The individual roots were atraumatically extracted using the golden dent physics forcep. Although the tooth was removed in a manner that minimized trauma to the extraction socket, a large de facial defect was present and noted, necessitating a socket grafting procedure to prepare the site for future implant placement. The socket was then aggressively curetted to remove any granulation tissue and evaluate the facial defect. After extraction, a digital radiograph is always taken to confirm complete removal of the tooth roots. Because there was some crestal bone loss due to the infection of the tooth, a simple envelope flap was made facially and lingually to expose the defect. Note the, that vertical incisions were not necessary in this case. We then placed a Newport Biologic resorbable collagen membrane from Glidewell Direct and this membrane was cut to a proper size and positioned to a minimum of two millimeters beyond the facial defect. This is critical. This ensures a passive placement where the membrane is not easily dislodged. To maximize control and moldability of the grafting material within the large defect and socket site, Newport Biologics bone graft putty mineral collagen composite was selected for the procedure. The mineral com collagen composite was hydrated and then packed firmly, but not condensed, into the extraction socket and facial defect. We see that the resorbable membrane was folded over the grafted socket site to engage two millimeters of lingual bone. The technique of passively placing the membrane is critical to ensure predictable integration of the grafting material. Note that when no facial defect is present at the extraction site, the membrane is positioned directly over the crestal aspect. We see that several villets plus sutures from River Point Medical were placed to close the site and maintain the membrane, which serves to prevent invagination of epithelium during the healing phase. When the membrane remains intact for a minimum of six weeks, the graft will heal predictably. The Newport Biologics membrane used in this case was selected for its drapeability, strength, and ability to last three to four months intraorally, which makes it an ideal product whether or not primary closure is obtained. We see that the post-operative radiograph uh, indicates an adequate fill of the extraction socket following placement of the grafting material. A four-month follow-up radiograph confirms successful regeneration and maintenance of bone within the extraction socket, illustrating proper bone turnover from the apex to the crest over time. In figure 13, we see that with adequate ridge width created and height established, a Han tapered implant from Glidewell Direct was flaplessly placed. In figure 14, we see a post placement radiograph showing properly positioned implant with ample space available in the apical, coronal, and mesial distal dimensions. In case report number two, we're going to look at an immediate implant with a facial defect. We see this patient who visited my office seeking treatment for a fractured maxillary right central incisor. Note the severe soft tissue irritation around the badly damaged tooth. Digital radiographs and a CBCT analysis confirmed a hopeless prognosis for tooth number eight. Note the facial defect caused by the root splitting. Implant treatment was proposed and accepted by the patient with immediate implantation preferred if indicated following the extraction of the tooth. The untreatable tooth was carefully and atraumatically removed and it, the socket site was curetted to remove any granulation tissue and to evaluate any bony defects. 
An Orban knife, and this was used to create an envelope flap, eliminating the necessity of vertical incisions. This allowed for visual visualization and examination of the facial defect prior to moving forward. Despite the presence of a facial defect, sufficient bone was available to proceed with immediate implantation with the aid of cortical cancellous allograft material. And we see that we use the Newport Biologic Mineralized Cortical Cancellous Allograft Blend, and this was wetted with sterile saline, and the resorbable membrane was cut to proper size to cover the defect and lay passively over the edentulous crest. We simply started our implant placement procedures, and a pilot drill was used to make the initial penetration into the bone. The preparation was not made directly into the socket, but rather three millimeters palatal to the facial aspect of the adjacent teeth. Engaging the palatal walls helped increase the initial implant stability. The Han tapered implant was then threaded into position and was remarkably tightened to the final torque of 45 newton centimeters. A cover screw was placed into the implant prior to bone grafting and membrane placement. Newport Biologic allograft material, which provides an osteoconductive matrix for revascularization and structural integrity for the regenerated bone, was positioned in and around the facial defect. Then the resorbable membrane was passively positioned and sutured into place. Our postoperative periapical radiograph and CBCT sagittal view illustrates properly positioned implant and grafted defect. Thank you for that, Dr. Kaczynski. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Chairside Live. On behalf of everyone here at Glywell Laboratories, thank you for watching, and I'll meet you right back here next time.